Hey there guys, how's it going? I've got a bit of a challenge for you in this video if you're interested in taking part. I'm going to call it the hashtag Hubble Bubble Challenge. Um, what I'm going to do is provide you with the data set of SHO Hubble Palette, if you like, data on the Bubble Nebula. And we're going to try and process our own image taken either with your own data if you wish to use that or my data which I'm going to provide in a link in the description box down below and process it as closely as possible to match the Hubble Space Telescope's own image of the beautiful bubble nebula which looks something like this. Now, uh, if you want to take part in this and submit your uh, own image and I can at a later date, if we get enough submissions, rate it in a video or critique it, that kind of thing, or maybe even do a live stream event where we could go through, process the data again together and then have a look at everybody's results, that kind of thing please do make a post on Instagram with your own results using the hashtag Hubble Bubble Challenge, all one word, and I should be able to find it very easily that way in the uh, in the future. Now, the reference data, if you want to take part on this, can be found at this site right here, esahubble.org images, and you just click it on it, and it's the Bubble Nebula. Right-click, open in a new tab is what I did, which gives you this nice high-resolution image, and you can simply drag and drop that into your Pixie Insight window, giving you this to work from, so you can actually follow along if you'd like. Now, if you do choose to use my data for this, which is absolutely fine, by the way, I'm more than happy to share my uh, my stuff. So hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, right there, just drop those in, and you should be able to make a start. Now, this isn't going to be a processing tutorial or anything. I just thought, why not record me having a quick go, a uh, submission, if you will, to this challenge. And uh, let's take a look at exactly how it processes. So I'm just going to select the hydrogen alpha and tile this out. You can use, by the way, whatever processing software you would like. The only rule I'll say is that just don't cheat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't take this Hubble data right here and, you know, pixel math it into your own image or pretty much copy and paste it or anything like that. It has to be an image, if you're going to submit one, uh, processed from honestly captured and processed data. <laughs> Just no cheating. So uh, yeah, Hydrogen Alpha, let's take a look at all these three. Now I'm going to give them an STF. A lot of stacking artifacts after all these sessions have been added up. This is the worst offender. I'm going to go ahead and use Dynamic Crop on this thing. Let's get rid of any and all evidence of those stacking artifacts that looks like it's going to take care of it all. I'll copy it across to my over images first. And then the main one. Brilliant. Let's zoom in and take a good close look now at the detail in this data. And it looks, it really is quite good data, even if I do say so myself. Uh, it's certainly some of the sharpest, or maybe the sharpest amateur um, bubble nebula data I've seen. Uh, and now if we apply Blur Exterminator, which, by the way, I have affiliate links to this down below. Um, if you guys want to use those, it would be a really huge help and a massive thank you to everybody who already has used those. You guys help me out an absolute ton with your support. You really do, so thank you. Um, if you want to try this, data, this software out, rather, please use those links. It makes a huge difference. Um, it really does. So thank you. Now then, I just, have, while I'm talking to you there, increased the non-stellar sharpening actually right up to the max on this thing. And I think I'm going to also try the sharpen stars up quite a bit as well. Let's take a look at how this day reacts to that. So, uh, just wait a moment. Blur extend it to do its thing. It shouldn't take two seconds. And wow. <laughs> this software, man, is so good. Um... That's unbelievable. The amount of detail from this thing uh, when it's turned up like this as well on already good data is just phenomenal. I have to say, look at the amount of detail present right there. Just unbelievable. Uh, this was taken, by the way, with a Celestron Edge HD 11 at its native F10. Uh, so it's 2800 mil focal length with a 533 camera from Player One Astronomy, in my case. Um, looks really good. Anyway. A little bit of salt and peppery, of course, noise in this thing as it's only actually about seven or eight hours of data. So I'm going to apply a bit of denoise. I also want to maybe keep a little bit of detail turned on the slider right there. 
just to make sure I preserve every last bit because the Hubble data is of course extremely detailed, it goes without saying. Uh, it doesn't take two secs to apply that. And uh, the HA is pretty low noise, but I'm going to go ahead and just apply it anyway and make sure nothing's uh, getting lost in translation. And it isn't, it's maintaining all the detail and uh, just denoising. Really happy with that result. I think at this point, uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush too much. I'm just going to reset my STFs and apply HD stretch on link. You can stretch however you'd like, of course, um, but I'm stretching this way. So now we've got non-linear images. We can go ahead and combine them. I'm just going to use LRGB combination with L unticked. You could just use RGB combination if you should wish. And the combo that you're looking for is SHO mapped to RGB, respectively. And it should, if we just get this done, look something like any moment now, drum roll, this. Uh, and that's our now new image that we're going to work on. I'll just get rid of all the rest of the visual clutter from the screen. And then we can process alongside one another if you are following along with this. I'll tile the windows, bring up the size of the Hubble image right there a bit, and uh, we can take a look at the data. So what I would usually be doing at this point, because these magenta stars always did bug me, uh, even with Hubble images, um, it'd be control and invert, and I'd be dropping an SCNR on that thing, and uh, you know, getting rid of that. But, <laughs> as we are trying to do the hashtag Hubble Bubble Challenge, well, the Hubble image has got pink stars, so uh, my image is going to have pink stars too. Um, let's continue on with it as is. Now before I actually going to take those stars out in just a moment, before I do, I think I'm going to make a histogram adjustment overall to image 8 right there is what it is. And drag down that black point a good bit. Now I'm let me just make sure of this. I'm going to have to slightly clip this data by the looks of things. Um, if I wanted to show up properly. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. We can always take it further later, but at this point now, stars are gonna have to come out, I would say. So for that, I'm gonna use star exterminator, generate a star image and on screen the stars. Now all we need to do is just wait a moment while it does its thing, and then the next step is going to be to try and start pulling these colors uh, into something a little bit more accurate. So there's our star image. Looks to me actually like it's just robbed very slightly a bit of the bubble from the side along with it. But you know what? It is what it is. It's uh, it's fine. We'll continue on. Uh, press onwards regardless. Now I'm going to use narrowband normalization from uh, Bill Blanchard and Mike Cranfield. SHO palette, I'm going to fire up a preview and zoom in that preview just a bit, so we're, you know, a tiny bit closer to the bubble view. So as I'm making adjustments, we can in real time tweak whatever we need. So the O3 boost to get these blues popping. Um, absolutely, yes, that is required. Maybe a little bit stronger even right there. This is pushing it very slightly towards being too blue um so i am gonna have to go ahead mask that blue and then add some green on top as well to push it back towards a teal color i would say uh would probably be my approach for this and then the sulfur boost if we just crank that up a touch do you know what that's pretty close it's not perfect but it's pretty close already I would say. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, apply that right now. Uh, and I think we now need to start masking out those colors. So the, the blue, I want to start working on that in order to try and push it towards this beautiful teal that they've uh, achieved on the Hubble image right there. So let's see if we can get a decent mask. And we sort of can. A little bit of a messy mask. I'm not going to lie, but... Let's see what we can get from it. So I've blurred it out just a bit there. Let's go ahead and use curves. Preview. And zoom that preview. Just touch. 
like we said last time, and now green added in will start to push this in the right direction. As you can see, we've taken it to a lighter, more teal tone now. All it lacks at this point really is proper saturation. So I'm going to apply a bit more saturation to the whole thing right there and try to then carefully zero in on that tealish colour, which looks like it's landing somewhere around about yeah, about there. For me, it's pretty close. You'll note on the Hubble image as well, there's a lot of interconnecting gas going on. There is also that beautiful teal colour, uh, touching all the way down to these these beautiful formations of HA and, uh, and sulphur down there. I'm fairly happy with that, as is. So I'm going to go ahead and apply. Let's reset our tool. Uh, I want to get rid of that mask. And now this time, uh, I think I need a yellow mask. It's probably going to get most of this. It usually seems to kind of do the job when I'm working on SHO data. Uh, mask blur that a couple of times so nothing's desperately, you know, razor sharp edges, which just tends to look awful in a uh, processed image. Go ahead, open up a new preview and a new crop on that preview. And now let's try and push these uh, these little formations down here slightly towards having brighter edges, yellowish, more more yellowish. You see what we're doing as we add that color right there. It's, it's obvious, it would be way too strong if we just did that, but it does need a bit where it was. So somewhere about there. And then let's nuke the low end back down to be more in line once again. So feel like that's closer. Certainly looks to be lifting those edges just a bit, which is good. Um, I think just a tiny, tiny touch more up right there. And maybe even... I want to say, let's see if this works, a little injection of red as well, because I don't know if you can see once again on the Hubble image right there, we've got these copperish tones coming through in the bottom, uh, and I want those to be present down here as well. So uh, let's just see how that looks. I don't want to go too far. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that's... That's reasonably close, you know. I think we are pretty reasonably close. I'm going to go ahead and close that down. I'll just minimize this image a moment while I get rid of these masks. I don't really want those ones anymore. If I need fresh masks, I'll make fresh masks. But at this point now, uh, in order to close in even further, what I am going to do is put the stars back in, I think. Uh, so to do that, I'm just going to use Stylus and stars, these rescreening tools that I uh, shared a while back. Go ahead and close those down, we'll just minimize the rest of it. So we could always come back and give it more time and effort if we wanted, uh, just for the sake of a quick run through on video, I thought I'd just do this while you're live. But now what I do want to do is bring this crop of the Hubble image right here, this perfect little square to my own image. So to do that, I'm going to go to Processors, All Processors, and Dynamic Alignment. And you see we've got no source and target view set, so I'm going to set this as my source. This is my target. And I'm going to start to try and uh, find some really easy to identify stars. So this one right here, just off the edge of the bubble. So I'll select that. And you can see it's landed nowhere near. It's actually right up in the top corner. So I'm going to pull it to its correct position. Snap it in place. And now this is very easy to find too. Next to it in the middle of the bubble. Misidentified. So let's put it on the right star. That looks correct to me. And now let's try and get that star that I originally misidentified. And now we have got a triangle. We've got a star. The rest of these should be quite accurate really as we, uh, we put them in. So you can see there's a couple of stars at the edge. Go ahead, get both of those. Some of these round bubble itself looks to be doing a very good job sometimes if you try 
let's say on the bright car itself, it's just missed a bit there, you see. Not really good enough. It's not where I'm looking for. It could cause problems with the alignment, so instead I'm going to... You could always take that out if you wish. But for me, it looks like it's put it now in the right spot. So we'll, we'll forgive it and move on. And let's go ahead and make sure we've got at least, I'd say, a good 20 samples for this thing to work from. That should be uh, should be enough. If we have any problems, we can always just reset this tool and uh, and try again. I think it's good form to try and you know spread them out around the image as much as possible. That looks like we've done a pretty good job. Um, that'll do. Go ahead and click, and hopefully that should have registered our images together now. And we uh, probably have got these just about matched so i'll tile the windows once again and now you'll know when we zoom we've actually truly matched these two together um now we can see a little bit of noise in my image um not much do want to address it just a touch though with a very light pass of noise exterminator so let's just make sure that's that's on the money, I'd say. Looks beautiful, we're not damaging any of the detail. My image is overall too bright. We can also say that. Uh, so let's try and rein it in just a touch. Uh, for this, I'm gonna allow the stars to back off just a touch as well by using a full curves adjustment. Just, just a touch downwards. So you can see it's taking the edge off. I don't wanna do this and ruin everything, but I do wanna take the edge off using this tool so that's not bad it's taking us in the uh, the right direction i would say maybe just a touch too strong let's try and zero in now on that black point a little bit better using histogram tool and we're on rescreen results registered so i'm keeping my uh, reference image in view just pull it in. We're almost, I mean, we are actually at the point where we need to uh, pretty much clip data to make it match the Hubble shot right there. It's, uh, it's very odd, I think. But it is what it is. We are trying to match it, so go for that. Normally you'd never do that, of course, like clipping data, but it is what it is. Um, there seems to be an overall like a magenta cast to the background of the image, which is kind of there in my shot, but not really fully, uh, but it's not bad. I think the only thing my image is lacking now is just a, a little boost overall in saturation, um, very generally speaking. So let's hit it with a touch of sat. Obviously not too much, <laughs> but just a bit uh, right there. Let's touch closer. I like it. And I think, you know, for a quick, what are we talking, 15 minute process, something like that, that ain't bad. Um, we've done a pretty good job <laughs> of making it match up right there with the uh, the Hubble shot. If we put the two side by side, you can see obviously <laughs> Hubble's got it handily be as you would expect, but I'm really impressed by what you can do in your backyard, especially with these bloody fantastic tools that we have access to nowadays um so yeah have a go hashtag hubble bubble challenge tag me on instagram and if we get enough tags like i say we can go through and take a look at them together on a video or a live stream or something like that and uh, if we can have some fun from it that's that's what it's really all about for me uh, and hopefully for some of you guys too and if not have a go anyway if you want to process this data and see if you can learn anything from it um that's about everything from me. Once again, if you want to support my channel in any way, one of the best ways to do it is by treating yourself at the same time and using any of my affiliate links, especially, you know, Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, Star Exterminator, all that good stuff. Um, channel memberships, Patreon. Man, you guys support me in a bunch of different ways and I want you to know very genuinely, I do appreciate each and every one of you out there. So, uh, yeah. Much love. Anyway, look after yourselves, guys. I'm going to leave it at that. I can't wait to see your submissions. And until the next ones, 
Just look after yourselves and clear skies.